All right, welcome back, everybody. Before we hop into our first adventure tonight, which I've entitled, What is Love? We're gonna take a brief moment and introduce our characters. So without further ado, first we have joining us tonight, Dakar Greg. Actually, I'm sorry, really quick. Everyone say, Dakar, say a word. Uh, hello. Thrum, say a word. Hello. Hiori? Seven! And Lana? Lana? It inevitably is going to work. It's fine. I've already proven the thing that I need to prove. All right. Anyway, just testing to make sure another thing was working, i.e. the lights. All right. Dakar, good evening. Uh, um, hi. I am. Uh, it's been a little while. <laughs> uh, it has been some time. So, Dakar, tell me, how have you been uh, in, your, uh, in your kind of degree of absence? What have you been up to as a blade? Well, um, it's, uh, it's been a lot of work uh, digging more of Tuk Tuk out from under the sands and getting the, the housings furnished once we get the rooms actually livable again. Mm, I, uh, I understand. So it's, uh, it's been a period of kind of transition for you, it sounds like. Uh, yeah, we, we've been just uh, mostly finishing up working on uh, some of the, the bigger projects there. Uh and is it, for the most part, complete now? Is that why you're able to get out and adventure again? Well, it's complete enough that we don't need to be there to, like, I I was more there in the position as, like, a, a furniture maker, and um, I, I have enough in the, in the back rooms now that they have the furnishings they need. Uh, yeah, and, you know, confident that everyone else there kind of working on the project, because I imagine it's not just Certainly not just you and uh, a lot of people working on this. Oh, oh yeah, tons of couples all over. Indeed. Um, and um, well, you're back out adventuring again today. And then, well, it's Valentine's Day, both in real life and then in the land of D&D time. Uh, do you have any particular way of, of celebrating Valentine's Day, Dakar? Is, is there love in your life, Dakar? Well, love in my life? I, I am. Uh, <laughs> Um, and while uh, Dakar kind of has a little bit of a, a, a breakdown there, we'll move on next to our, our next hero. We have joining us as well, Thrum, who shrugs off death. Uh, good evening. Hello. Thrum. Good evening. Uh, tell me, Thrum, how are you? Uh, I, I'd ask you for coffee, but I'm not sure you'd have either a vessel or enough coffee. Yes, it's a little bit hard for me to give you things, as I'm just sort of a disembodied voice in the sky. But, um, but through know that if I did have coffee, I would I would love to share it with you. Uh, how have you been? I have encountered. Well, it's been ex it's been exhausting. I shall leave it at that. Hopefully, I'll sh I'll be able to get Bartholomew to give me at least a temporary break soon. But. At least I'm getting away from all the exhaustion tonight. Um, yes, hopefully your, um, hopefully your adventure this Valentine's Day, and from what you heard, uh, you're reading a little bit of the, uh, you're reading a little bit of the kind of posting that Bartholomew had given you originally when you, you signed up for this one, and it seems relatively easy. You're just there to, to cheer someone up, maybe exactly the kind of thing that you need to unwind a little bit on this, uh, on this Valentine's Day. Perhaps. Uh, and does Thrum particularly celebrate the holiday? Is this a, um, is, is this a significant day or is it just, just I know you um, spent a lot of time in the forest. You might be disconnected to what is a, a more, you know, commercial holiday. But what is, is Thrum's take on it? Thrum is somewhat unsure of exactly what this holiday is. It does seem rather, <clears throat> well, unusual and yes there does seem to be a highly commercial aspect that he doesn't quite understand well um perhaps that you over the uh, course of the day can find out what um what the season's all about uh and through of course welcome back it is good to see you again thank you it is good to see you as well thank which you. is i would see you, disembodied voice. <laughs> yes, still hear me. I, under I understood what you meant. Very good. Next up, we have joining us Hiori Glazia, the Glittering Avenger. Good evening, Hiori. 
Hi. Um, Hiori, tell me, how are you this evening? <sighs> uh, a little stressed, underworked, actually. Underworked? I've been, yes, I've been trying to get <clears throat> someone to take the day off and go for a spa, but... Uh, you know. It's a, uh, well, spa day perhaps turned into a work day? Unfortunately, because, again, someone would much rather be doing useful things rather than relaxing. Uh, understood. I mean, again, as, as I said to Thrun, perhaps today's adventure will prove to be, if not relaxing, at least not as stressful as some of the other adventures you've gone out on. Uh, looks like you're just out to cheer someone up. Maybe you can cheer yourself up in the process. As long as there's chocolate. Um, and you know that Central City has, you know, all of the finest chocolatiers are out in their, uh, are putting out their absolute best for the occasion. So if there is a place to be for chocolate, maybe aside from some of the villages in the Big Rock Candy Mountains, it is most decidedly Central City. I might have to go on a turn in both of these locations soon, because I used to be a chocolatier. Ooh, really? Uh, well, uh, you'll have to lend your critical eye, perhaps, if you encounter any of them. Uh, Hiori, I know you would rather be doing something else, but I hope that you, uh, well, I hope that you are able to relax and enjoy yourself as much as you can, given the circumstances. Welcome back, Hiori. Oh, don't worry. And to the question that you would be asking me, I think, yes, don't worry, there is someone I love. Ah, uh, yes, of course, I did forget to ask, is there love in your life? And, well, I'm glad to hear a, reso a resounding yes. Very uh, close to spicy. me, in fact. Um, I won't, uh, well, I won't ask you the details now, but perhaps uh, I have my own suspicions. Welcome back, Yuri. And, of course, last but not least, we have Lana Ko here joining us once more. Good evening, Lana. Good evening. Lana, how are you on this Valentine's Day? About the same as always. Mm. Um, you sounded, uh, well, frankly, you sounded a bit down as you said that. I don't know about that, but you know my situation. Um, yes, I, I do know that it is, uh, I do know that it is difficult, perhaps. Um, perhaps Valentine's Day can be a bit of a well, I, I was going to say, I won't even bother saying it because I don't want to put you in a bad mood at all, Lana. I don't want to, you know, bum you out at all. Um, so, Lana, tell me, uh, what's been going on lately? Just what have you been up to? Uh, out, you know, barring the, uh, the occasion, just tell me what's been uh, new in your life. Anything? Not a whole lot. Uh, I've been over at the, the temple lately for... Uh, my son. But I was just going to say, I can hear your boy. Uh, I can hear you have your boy with you today. It is um, something, it sounds like it's something of a take your son to work day. Uh, more like I got called here and after just leaving the temple for it, where they were doing some event. What was the event? Oh, some love day event or something. Indeed, yes, the uh, the Valentine's Day event. Yeah, that sounds uh, that sounds about right. The uh, the lands of D and D time are astir. Well, Lana, I uh, well, I'm glad to hear that you are doing well, and I uh, I wish you the best of luck in all of your endeavors today. And with that, allow us to uh, to hop into tonight's adventure proper. As I mentioned, where we begin, all of you find yourselves upon the streets of Central City, one of the larger metropolises in the lands of D&D time. And as you're walking around, uh, Valentine's Day is definitely in full swing. Um, you can see people, you know, there's a, there's a lot of like couples out today kind of holding hands and shopping. Uh, many of the shops are decorated with, with hearts and brilliant kind of reds. There is you know, love, there's love in the air throughout the region. Uh, and beyond that, um, as it's celebrated in, in the lands of D&D time, Valentine's Day, uh, from all of your kind of 
know general knowledge about the place that you're in. Um, while it kind of started as a kind of a, a holiday for more traditional, you know, more romantic love, it has also kind of spread out to just love as a broader concept. Uh, and so beyond just, you know, couples walking around and, and you know, the romance of it, there's also just, you know, it's just a happy holiday where people celebrate things like, like family uh, and just passion uh, beyond, you know, again, beyond romantic love. Um, so there's also just a lot of like musicians and artists that are out um, kind of practicing and, and working on their crafts. Uh, and it's just, the atmosphere is, uh, the atmosphere is, like I said, festival uh, as you're walking about the streets. But the particular corner that you find yourself wandering into is a little bit, uh, it's, it's a little bit smaller uh, as you're walking around it and a little bit less brightly colored at the moment. Uh, a very small workshop, it looks like, where you can see a um, simple sign, uh, Gillis Artificer. Uh, and this is apparently the individual that you're supposed to speak to about your mission today, where he needed you to, well, cheer someone up, it sounded like. So, as you kind of stand on the precipice of that doorway, um, you can uh, hear from coming from inside, uh, beyond, you know, behind you, like I said, there's a bunch of, like, shops. Um, Hiori, you can see, uh, as you were looking for before, you've passed by a couple to get here, uh, but you can see a very fine looking chocolate, uh, chocolatier. Uh, across the street, there's a, a nice cafe where there's a lot of people sitting in a park not too far nearby. And then, of course, in front of all of you, there is the, uh, the door. You can hear someone kind of shouting inside, but it's a little bit muffled uh, by the closed door and closed windows of the building. What would you all like to do as you come into this adventure? So, just to clarify, we hear shouting from Inside on the, the other building. side of the door? Yes. Hmm. That does... I'm just staring at the, uh, all the chocolate. Oh, yes, there's, um, there's a ton of it out. Uh, and as you're, uh, as you're just kind of looking out in the distance, there's a, uh, individual walking by, kind of holding a tray. He's, Free samples, free samples, uh, and it does look to be like chocolate strawberries. Um, come and have free samples, chocolate strawberries. I have for all of you, please. Uh, and he's kind of like walking nearby, Lana. I take a handful. <laughs> is this, uh, well, well, this is only one per um, customer. If you are interested in more chocolate strawberries, you could come to Francois Chocolatier. Uh, and he kind of points down the way, uh, just over there. Uh, but only if you don't. Well, now your hands are upon, you may have the, you may have the ones, uh, but do consider if you enjoy them purchasing more. Uh, he kind of points to the shop. Uh, would anyone else like a chocolate strawberry? Kiri will pick one, but obviously not for herself. She's going to hand it to the car who is on her shoulder as kind of a nice gesture with uh -uh. a sly look on her face. Thank, thank, thank you. Um. <laughs> Dakar, you, you take the chocolate strawberry. Uh, or I, assu I assume you do so, because you said thank you. Yes. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, through, you're still just kind of like hanging out, and you're trying to like listen to what's going on inside. Like I said, it's a bit muffled. Yes, Thum is very much <laughs> probably covering a significant portion of the door with an ear trying to hear what's going on on the other side. Go ahead and make me a perception check. Um, it's faint. Um, a lot of the phrases... Um, uh, a lot of the phrases, like I said, are just a little bit too quiet. Uh, but the one where they kind of get really high in volume is... I built you to work, not to laze around. Uh, and then it kind of, you know, it becomes a little bit more, uh, and you can't quite make out what's being said behind the door. Hmm. That is troubling. Oh, well. <clears throat> and through kind of turns the rest of the party. Do you remember exactly where we were supposed to go? Is this the right place, or have we gotten ourselves lost? 
I must admit, even even though I do spend plenty of time in cities, I tend to stick to those areas of greenery that I find around and not pay perhaps as much attention as I should to the buildings. I I believe this is the right place. Don't worry. Um, yes, and the uh, the address does match um, through him as you kind of go back and, and check over the details. The address does match up with what you were told. Uh, before we go and enter, I'm going to cast Bless to my three other companions. Um, all right. Uh, you begin blessing your allies uh, in this moment, uh, and then you go ahead and step in. Uh, you said you're, you're going to move in after that? Uh, yeah. All right. Um, the door is unlocked. Uh, do all of you, do any of you have anything else, thing else that you're going to do before you walk in? Nope. 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 Right. Just walk in. All right, you hop in, uh, and you can see a human man. He's dressed in mage's garbs. Uh, he has kind of a uh, a blue, almost uh, a blue like bowler on, and he's kind of um, he, he looks very frustrated and disheveled. And you see him now shouting across the room, uh, and he's just kind of like exasperated uh, as he's kind of throwing his arms up the air and saying. I don't understand where you even could have gotten these ideas from. What have you been reading? Uh, and kind of a low, uh, kind of a very low voice coming from a room that you're not quite able to see through the door frame from where you walk in. Uh, you just hear a very low voice say, mm, books? Yes, I know books. What kind of books? What possibly could have gotten these ideas in your head? I don't know. I guess I can't, well, because I don't know, that is the problem. And he kind of like is, he kind of turns around and goes, oh, oh thank God you're finally, you are of course Bartholomew's adventurers, yes? I think, yes, no, yes. No, no. Oh, I got fables, that's good. I think I've heard of some of you before. Um, you're the dragon blade. The the one that doesn't die and the um the glitter avenger, right? Uh, wait. Close enough. Wait, wait, um, wait, wait. Which one doesn't die? There's two of us that never mind. Anyway, yes. Uh and you are you're just the name and you kinda of like things for a while. La Lana. Yes. Uh, yes, I have uh, I have heard of all of you. I'm having problems with this um I suppose I should introduce myself. I'm a, I'm a master artificer, uh, and I have constructed a golem uh, that I thought would be a, a great help in some of the tasks I have to do. It's very common that I have to move around, well, hauling strap metal from here to there, uh, performing more intricate work, but using uh, larger pieces. Sometimes if I'm welding something big, it's nice to have someone of the degree of consciousness to hold and act as an extremely strong assistant. And so oh. I constructed, <laughs> over many painstaking years, a golem. And my golem, I functioned as properly for a time, but he seems to, well, I underestimated my ability. He's perhaps a bit more sentient than he was meant to be, and he's gotten pretty uh, lazy. He's taken to walking around the laboratory here sullenly. He sighs frequently. You wouldn't I'm happen to have named him Marvin by any chance, would you? No, I did not name him. You can call him what you will. I simply uh, usually just refer to him as Golem. I have a slight suggestion to that. Yes. You could try naming him. Um, well, this is why I've called you. I am an individual of, you know, experimentation and science. Emotions, I would say, are not necessarily my strongest point. But I was told that you provide excellent emotional counseling for individuals such as this. So perhaps, I don't know, go and fix my golem's brain. Uh, if you think a name uh, is appropriate, you know, assign him one and then tell me what it is so we don't have any problems after this. 
I believe it might be a little more effective from you specifically. I mean, you are the one who made him and all. You are, in a way, his father. I suppose that is the... I'll think upon this. Why don't you just talk to him and tell me what you think to start with? Okay, we can do that. I need a favor from you, though. If do you do you have time right now? Are you in an open time slot, or are you working on a project? No, I, my project is delayed because of any kind of gestures to the room where the golem is. Uh, Hyori is going to throw him a, a small sack of money, right? Yep. And she's just he she's doesn't just catch it him. awkwardly and kind of reaches down and picks it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I need you to go and probably at one of the chocolate stores, see if you can find a small block of chocolate, uh, and bring it back to me. I might have an idea. The golem doesn't eat, you know. His chocolates oh. aren't going to cheer them up. Oh, I don't know about that. We'll see. Anyhow, you can keep the change either way. I don't need your change. And he kind of turns around and starts walking out to go and, and pick up your chocolates for you. Um, and um, you guys are now alone in the uh, the workshop here, the lab. Okay. Oh, that guy's a little bit. Um, oh, the car first. That guy's just a little bit uh, uh, kind of kind of rude. I I, I uh, hope this golem is doing all right in here. Yeah, I, I believe they both are having a little bit of trouble in this season, I suppose. Honestly, he needs more work than the golem will, but we'll see what we can do. Hyori is going to uh, approach the golem very kind of energetically almost and just um, sit right. down next to him. All right, you, uh, you step into the room beyond, and, and you can see actually currently... Uh, laying down on not a couch, it, it looks like it's maybe what a bed or a couch would be to a golem. Uh, it's just a big long stone slab with like a place to rest arms if you were sitting up on it. Uh, and he's laying, uh, laying with his like back to the door frame, and you kind of with his uh, head rested on a hand and another hand like looking at a um, uh, looking at a book. Uh, and you can just kind of hear under the, uh, the golem's breath <sighs> uh, as he kind of like, you know, very slowly and lazily turns a page and continues to look out. Um, they are very, they are huge. Um, this golem is maybe uh, 15 feet tall and wide of frame uh, and pretty fluid in its construction. It seems to be made of maybe like a, a, a magically enchanted clay is the best that you could describe for it. Um, because it, it's very smooth. You don't see any, like, there's no segments or pieces or joints. It's just does all he, one fluid thing. Does he have any visible features to him, or is he basically just a, a clay block man? Uh, his back is to you at the moment. All right, then. Um, Hiori is going to step around to face him, and just very quietly and politely say uh the artificers out right now um do you have a name for yourself by chance uh and kind of slowly puts down the book and looks up at you hello hello do i have a name i am called as golem Mm. That's what you are, but I, I wouldn't call that, that is not a name. name. It, it. I am not Loxiton. It is efficient. I am a golem, and often it is how I am referred. But if there were to be another golem here, would that not be completely inefficient? if you were to both be called simply Golem? In such a situation, an additional identifier may have been necessary. 
would it not be more efficient to assign an identifier more or in advance in case such a need was required it later uh, you think so no, it would be more efficient not to assign one. But I see no issue with doing so. If you wish to assign me an identifier, I will accept your judgment. Well, Am I correct on. in identifying your wish? Hold on. I believe the important part is that whatever we set to you as a name, would be something that you're okay with. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, and while you're kind of like standing there thinking, he just goes back and starts kind of starting to flip through his book uh, again. It looks to be a book of poetry. What, what are you, um, what, what you're reading there? These are poems. Do you know poems? I I know some poetry, but um, not not very much. They are words inefficient. Absolutely, they do not seem to convey points. But I was told that they might broaden my understanding, or I suppose it seemed that I might broaden my understanding from other books that I read. For people that love often read poetry. Do you hmm. have, do you understand the concept of love? No, this is the question I have been asking myself for some days now. It has left me sad. What is love? Other emotions are simple. I know that I am sad because I cannot understand this love concept. It equates, but the representations of love that I have read of, all of them seem to have different meanings. It has flexibility and fluidity. People seem to say it willy-nilly. They lend, you probably didn't say willy-nilly. <laughs> they lend <laughs> significance to it. Do you like the phrase willy-nilly? I recently picked that one up. It That's... is a phrase for sure. I believe it's fitting. All right, let's, let's think about it. Love isn't exactly the easiest concept to understand because it it's it's chaotic it doesn't make sense which is the major problem of it i was reading the dictionary it said that love was a feeling of strong positive emotion directed at an individual or an ideal but when i said that, well, it did not seem correct when I suggested to a customer that I loved to work. I was told that that was foolish. Do you like what you do? He kind of just stops for a moment and thinks. I don't know. Do you like to read? Kind of looks down. It is a good way to learn new information and to try and overcome these troubling emotions. So you find it gives you comfort to read a book or poetry? Um, knowledge is comfortable, I suppose. 
It is better to know something than not to know it. He kind of like stands up at this point. I apologize. What are your names? I am Hiori. On my shoulder is Dakar. Hello. Uh, the Loxodon is through, and Hello. our Minotaur friend is Lana. How's it going? It is going poorly. I am very sad. <laughs> uh, they say. How is it going with you, though? Well, I would say it's... How do I say this without seeming inconsiderate? I'd say it's going poorly because another friend that all four of us happen to know now is sad. Ah, I understand. You are sad because I am sad. I have heard of this before. And he kind of like thinks for a moment. Well, I will take no more of your time on my problems. Why are the four of you here? I assume you must have an order, perhaps. I don't believe that matters because we are actually here to help you in a way. To help me with what? Understanding emotions, your sadness, maybe to cheer you up. Mm, you kind of thinks for a while. You will help me answer what love is. If we can help, we'll certainly try. Uh, he kind of like have... looks down at you, Dakar. I have to. I have to warn you, though. Uh... That's a really big question that some kobold philosophizers have been searching for the answer to for many, many, many years. I, I don't I think, think that there is any one answer. So your philosophizers may spend all their lives and their children's lives and the lives of even their children's 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 philosophizing on the topic and never getting anywhere near some perfect true answer for it is my experience that love does not <coughs> that love does not <coughs> that love does not mean the same thing for every person and he kind of thinks for some time that is hard to accept. I have an extremely efficient thinking pattern. I imagine that I may be able to think better than some of these individuals and tackle this concept head on. But I will take your wariness of this into consideration. Uh through Lana, can you two pull up chairs for all of us? I think that would be a great time to sit. Uh, and he says, I was hoping if you would show me love that you might show it to me. I have spent much time in this workshop, but not beyond. Perhaps it may be helpful for me to see love. You. That that would be hard to do. I mean, love's kind of nebulous. Um, like, you can have a love of something like your master's love of science. Or you could have a, an affection for someone or something. Uh, and he kind of just... It seems my idea was a poor one and gets like even more kind of bummed out as he's like leaning down right now. I thought perhaps... It's a great idea. If we show you different examples of what love can be, maybe it can help you see the broad possibilities of it. He kind of straightens back up a little bit more. Your thinking is in line with mine. I was hoping there may be one prime example, though, that counts for 
all? Oh. Is there, there, are many is there, many is there a perfect that. love outside that you could show me? Unfortunately not. Love is one of those words and concepts where it means, like, different things to different people. And that's kind of what we've been trying to get at, is that it's a, a word with more than one meaning. Uh, sure is going to take this time to look at the golem to see if he's got any features on him. Oh, yeah. Um, you've been interacting with him for a while now. Yeah, he's got features. Uh, he's got a face. It's pretty simple. Um, he's kind of, like I mentioned before, he's, he's made of clay, uh, and it just kind of has almost that, like, just sort of pushing the eyes in um, with, like, your fingers and kind of, like, drawing, like, the simplest of, like, Play-Doh faces on this clay golem um, that you could, uh, you could have made, but all of it sort of moves in sync, and, like, the eyes seem to blink, even though that's kind of unnecessary, and the mouth does make shapes that kind of reminisce what words that, uh, kind of re reminisce what words he's using. Can I ask you a question? Uh, me the DM or the golem you're asking? The golem. All right. Yes. Do you feel any pain if someone reforms a part of you? No. I see. Would you? Hmm. I'll ask that later. Um, you'd like to go outside then? That would be, I think, educational. I have desired to see it beyond just the, well, beyond just my desire to learn of love. I see. All right. Um, we're going to go outside then. Let us, let me write a note real fast. Uh oh. Are you leaving a note? Oh, yes. <laughs> Just w went to teach Golem about love, be back before dinner. That is precisely what I will write. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you, uh, you're you going to step outside into the city streets? Uh, there is kind of like a big, like, warehouse barn style door i mean this golem's huge could not have fit through the main door but there is a door large enough to get like big parts and stuff through so you could uh you can let this golem out through that if you'd like uh that is a grand idea and later i'm going to end up trying in some capacity to give him a more distinguished face rather than looking like clay lego man oh all right um and, uh, these and looks around and tries to see what pro what at least va at least vaguely if he can tell what the project is or or anything about what the project is that got stopped because of the golem. Um. So is this like as you're kind of walking out the building? Yeah. As a, yeah. All right. So as we're heading like out. Uh, he's kind of stepping out in the sunshine, and, he, and, and you ask this, and he goes, um, some type of energy device, I think. I am often not told the end results. I am only told what actions to take in the moment. Hmm. I heard him discussing the potential for it to provide energy, though. Okay. What? And he kind of looks down at you. This is a good topic of conversation. I enjoy talking about work. Um, and he walks outside. Uh, and as he does, uh, people kind of all around the streets kind of look out and they see this very large uh, clay golem with a Lego man face and <clears throat> uh, kind of street traffic kind of slows down a bit and everyone's just kind of now looking at him and he's just kind of like looking around up into the sunlight uh, at all of the, you know, the people passing by and people start to just start to move closer and look closer at this golem. 
Uh, and he's just looking around a little bit overwhelmed, and he goes, there is quite a bit to take in here. Uh, as, as people are starting to crowd, you hear uh, little kids kind of walking up, and uh, one of them is shouting like, I want to ride the big clay man! Uh, and pe- people are starting to, uh, to crowd around you guys. As you walk out, what do you all do? Uh, maybe this wasn't the greatest idea, but this is what you wanted to do, so we're going to let that happen. Um... Do you have any ability to become hardened? Are you... Wait. Stupid question. Um... (laughs) He looks down. uh, All questions lead to insight and knowledge. There is no such thing as a stupid question. Not beyond what you currently see. It's not the question that's stupid, it's the person that asked it is stupid. Um... Talk are, not down to yourself. Are you... Do you have, like, a, a flexible softness level? Are you pliable, moldable, or... I am... You... I am somewhat pliable. Most of my shape is determined, but... And he kind of reaches out uh, and goes over to his arm and just kind of drag the... Uh, kind of drags across it and makes a little bit of a depression in his arm uh, and then goes and kind of squinches it and puts it back to the way it was. You can do that with my form. This gives me so many ideas. Would you like to find form at all? I have an idea for a swarm. I have an idea. Yes, Dakar. But we could make you into the, cool, into the coolest thing ever. We could, like, make you so awesome that everyone else would admire you. We just have to make you look like a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he, he looks over at you and he goes, This would teach me of love. Uh, I'm not uh, sure. No, but, um, <laughs> 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 but it would... He goes, Actually, it is entirely possible that that could teach you love because, well, kobolds like dragons. Some of them love dragons, in fact. It seems, as you mentioned before, um, uh, that I would require an identifier. I was short-sighted in your... in dismissing your question. Uh, And... You can hear now, like some of the like some of the little kids that are gathering around and getting really close, just asking questions over your conversation. Are like, "What's your name?" and like stuff like that. Uh, and he kind of is looking to um, uh, he's looking to you guys, kind of with a bit of a as much as he can express panic with his face. Uh, he's like, "What's my name?" Uh, how what about Craig? We'll try to gather as many of the children as possible and pick them up, sigh slightly, and start carrying them away from the golem. Wait, actually, actually, here's an idea, all right? And this is only if you're okay with it, uh, friend. We'll go with friend for now. So so not Craig, but friend? (laughs) Why don't we call him something that sounds distinguished and, um... Like, fancy. Maybe we could call him right. Hadaway. But we are going to pull... I'm going that to pull from friend. the chat now. We could do Marvin. Marvin was mentioned, I think, earlier. Is this the choice? It is not necessarily our choice to make. And he looks over at you a little bit like, go go on. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, Dakar, Hadaway isn't bad. But, um, but... Had a way. Is this had a way or had a way? It's had a way. It's, it's one word. 
I could I could be this if this is what you decree. But um, no, no, it's it is it is to be your name. It should be something that you are. That you feel would represent you. Perhaps I should remain golem then. No, 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 no. <laughs> Do you like? the sound of Hathaway instead of Golem. Mm. And he thinks, I carry no preference for sounds, but you mentioned that Golem was more confusable. Perhaps had a way, had a way. A single word, one word, had a way. I'm starting to like feel a little bit more confidence in it. All right, looks like you're into I the am Hathaway. Hathaway. I am Hadaway. Uh, and he begins uh, as through you're kind of like shuffling these children off to the side, and there's like parents and moms and dads who are like, oh, "I'm so sorry about my," son. you know. Uh, kind of coming up to it's, you, and you hear fine. the golem kind of just booms above the crowd. <laughs> Children, I am Hadaway! <laughs> uh, and you see a whole lot of these people are start Like, a whole lot of the people before that were just like, oh, what's this weird thing, are kind of now like, whoa, uh-oh. <laughs> Hey, ha- Are there Hadaway. any examples of parents trying to shield their children? A couple. Uh, for for certain, um, imp- there's definitely also a couple that are afraid of Thrum, uh carrying their children uh, away from the area, uh, and there's also some that are just like embarrassed that their kids are getting in trouble, and they can tell he means no harm. Um, hey. Dakar will point towards one of the parents protecting their children, child or children. Uh, go ahead and make me. Um, so, are you you pointing this out? He turns and looks, and he goes, "What of That's this?" Me. Well, um, that's that's a form of love right there, because the, the the big ones are raising the little ones, and they're trying to protect the little ones because they love them. Are you certain that this is love? It's it not, seems it's, a, it's no. not the totality of love, but it, it is part of what love is. A desire to protect. Yes. A desire to protect what you enjoy and what you like is a form of love, yes. Mm. And he kind of thinks for a while. Okay. That seems... Mm. I guess I love my self. Then... And he kind of That's... looks at you guys with like a raised eyebrow, like, did I do good? That's a start. Oh, yes. That um, is good. I am doing well. However, <laughs> there's love of your inner self and there's love of your outer self. An example would be your inner self is like your personality and your outer, your outer self is, well, what other people physically see of you. And... Much as he reaches over and just tears his arm off and kind of holds it out to you, I am the same on the inside as I am on the outside. Okay. He sticks his arm, he sticks his arm back on. It's one solid bit of clay. An Ooh. inner self is like the, the, Ooh, like when you tries think. to cover as many children's eyes as possible. <laughs> it's just it's just cl- it's like maybe it's maybe spiritually, uh, it's maybe spiritually graphic, but definitely not the imagery because it's just his arm is just clay on the inside, uh, and he um, kind of goes. This is the spirits of the ch- of the small children that are important to me. Uh, yes. uh, and some of the, so, I mean, some of the kids there are like, cool, uh, as they, like, some of them are just, like, looking on in awe as he has this power. You watch as one kid starts just, like, pulling on his own arm and goes, like, I want to be like Hadaway, and uh, is trying to, uh, is trying to mimic that. Hadaway goes, 
Uh, and Hadaway's now just kind of like looking around the space. I will see more of love. And starts just walking forward into the street. <laughs> uh, what do you guys do? Kiori's going to follow and she's going to look very expressly for anyone that has a ladder. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, and um. make a, you make an investigation check. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Hadaway seems to be uh, beelining for that like romantic, uh, that romantic looking cafe that was across the way. Uh. Uh, you're looking around for a ladder. Uh, you don't immediately see anything. Uh, there's no one out like working. Uh, so it's basically, you'll eventually find a ladder. It just might take like five minutes. So if you want to go grab a ladder, you can do this. Looking for? Uh, yeah, yeah, like a, a ladder or something so I can get up to, you know, his face and parts of his body because I have an idea. Uh, and as he's kind of walking over towards the cafe, he seems to hear you. He turns back around and, and just shouts, I can bring my face to you if you'd prefer. Can you hold a position for an extended amount of time? Hmm. For now, and he kind of just goes into his, he just kind of grabs onto a chunk of his stomach and <laughs> rips it out. And there's just a kind of a hole, uh, a big like indent into him now. And he kind of <laughs> throws it over to you. <laughs> I'd like you to make me a strength saving throw. I am surprised paladins do not have proficiency. Yeah, it's those. charisma and wisdom. I always think strength too, but. And not a problem. You catch it, it's heavy uh, as he throws this big mass of his body at you and it kind of like whoosh, sinks you down a little bit. And he goes, I will make that. over to try to help take some of the weight. I will make that my head later on. Uh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is what you wanted, correct? To change my head. Oh, I might change all of you. Uh, and he kind of thinks, hmm, I must be of a form efficient for working. Bipedal and thumbs. I can do exactly that. Uh, and he goes, okay, I will see more love now. Uh, and he <laughs> steps forward uh, and you watch as he kind of shrinks down and his body kind of uh, through the door frame into the cafe, but a little bit imperfectly. And he watches a bunch of the glass on the outside of it shatters uh, as he's kind of coming through um, in like kind of like cracks and the windows don't completely fall out or anything uh but you hear a bunch of screams from inside of the cafe as he comes in um and okay. hadaway, just, uh, hadaway kind of shouts out no be calm i don't mean you any harm you are showing signs of distress <clears throat> uh Thurum, Lana, we might have a problem and i believe some might? <laughs> i'll take care of the windows I would like you guys to roll for initiative as Hadaway is about to wreck shop by accident inside of this. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, and he's going to go ahead and roll. I'll go ahead and change his name to Hadaway. We've made a mistake. <laughs> I can fix the windows. Uh, you see immediately, Dakar, Hadaway walks in, people begin to kind of shout and get nervous, and you see Hadaway kind of like, no, be calm, and kind of like tries to adjust himself in the smaller space, but he's having a little bit of trouble and just kind of steps down and just puts a foot through a table, smashing it. Um, a very, uh, it's a real bull in a china shop situation. Uh, what would you like to do, Dakar? The car will run forward and try to jump through one of the already broken windows. Uh, to the get car inside. Uh, the car, go ahead and make me an athletics check to crash through the uh, windows uh, without taking damage. Would be the ideal. You'll get through them either way because they're already pretty broken. Oh boy! 
Dakar is such an athletic person. <laughs> That's this is your situation. You're trying to do some trying to do some badass athletic shit. Jakar <laughs> uh, rolls a negative one. Remember when I said he'll always get through the window? <laughs> um, uh, I, was lying. I was lying to you. You, uh, you are going to take four points of piercing damage as just some of the glass shards that were already basically already out for you. You just kind of bounce into those a little bit awkwardly and cut yourself and end up on the outside of the building. You still have an action. Wait, my friend, don't try to lose some of your mass before going in there. I, um, can you shuttle some of it else off? Uh... All right, and he goes, okay. Uh, and it's not his turn yet. Um, Carefully, <laughs> by the way, we don't need to do any damage to any of the surroundings. Uh, go ahead. That's going to move us on to your turn. Actually, he already, what would you like to do? Uh, he can't feel pain, right? No, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> He's done some very okay. bad things so far, if he can. I have a perfect, like a, a picture, perfect idea of what we can do. Um, and since he doesn't feel pain, freezing parts of his body over shouldn't hurt him. However, um, it should make it to where... He has a little bit more uh, solid control over his body. <clears throat> you're trying to hit him for um, you're trying to hit him for cold damage. Oh no 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 no! I'm not trying to hit him at all. I'm not even pulling out a weapon. Oh, okay. I'm just looking over the situation. Oh, I'm not okay. making any kind of attack here. Oh, all but, right. Uh, I, um, so what's the uh, what's the play? To... The play is. I, I, I feel that we want to get into the cafe, make sure that I am trained in persuasion. Hold on. Um, is it possible for me to enter the cafe normally and kind of try and calm everyone down? Um, yeah, all right. So you just walk in through the door. Um, you're like a little bit in the door frame behind uh, Hadaway, and there's a lot of people that are forward and more in the main cafe section, and he's, they don't want to, like, leave because he's blocking the door. Um, so you're kind of, like, leaning around behind him as you come in. What do you say? Uh, sorry for the... How do I say this? Sorry for the sudden appearance of Hadaway here. Uh, this is his first time out because his owner has a small problem of never letting him see the light of day. Uh, go ahead and uh, make a persuasion check to like by by you being in. No. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, so it's one of those days. <laughs> and you can, um, <clears throat> uh, you can see visibly as you're saying things. As soon as you say, his owner never saw him see the let him see the light of day. Uh, there's just the general consensus it seems from these people, like, yeah, you think? <laughs> um, and, uh, people are even more kind of, like, backing into the corner, terrified, uh, as, as they're all kind of scrambling away. Uh, you watch as one person, actually, in response to that, just takes a plate and chucks it at Hathaway's head, uh, and, and just sounds, back off! Back off! Uh, <clears throat> Uh, like, you know, like caged rats is what they feel like at the moment, uh, which I believe is going to bring us to Hadaway's turn. Um, Hadaway is going to, uh, gets hit with a plate, and you hear him kind of go like, whoa. <laughs> like, he doesn't, he doesn't feel pain, but he doesn't like having a, a plate thrown at him, it looks like. <clears throat> uh, and as he's kind of looking around, uh, and he goes, you said less me, right? Uh, and... <sighs> Uh, just starts kind of like scraping away at his own body and chunks of clay are just <clears throat> slopping off onto the ground, uh, frankly breaking more tables. Uh, and one of them kind of like gets on a person uh, and that person, I mean, it's just, they got some clay like around their leg, pushing them down, uh, but they just start shouting out, it's eating me, it's eating me. This is a train wreck. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we move next in initiative to Thrum. What would you like to do, Thrum? 
Uh, I think I'd like to... Can I get to the person inside the shop who has the clay on them? Do we have a mass suggestion? Uh, the, you, all right, you, uh, you're going to try and push past uh, Hadaway? Go ahead and make me an athletics check to like get by him as he's completely blocking the door frame right now. Oh, oh no problem! <laughs> Look at these. These rolls are so extreme. Uh, as you, you know, you you push him a little bit to the side uh, and step through, you get over to that individual, no problem. Uh, they're looking up at you. You're uh, an adventurer. You, you're here to help us. And roughly, how much clay is on top of them? Um, it's like coating their leg and kind of sticking them to the ground a little bit, uh, rooting them in place, but it's not like a lot in the grand scheme of things. I just take the clay off and throw it outside through the window. Um, all right, I need you to make me a, uh, to kind of like scrape the clay. I'll let you make one of three rolls you can pick, uh, athletics, sleight of hand, or an attack roll against it using a, like a non-magic weapon to kind of scrape it off. I have a feeling you might shiv a person if you critically fail on a tackle. And statistically speaking, you probably will. Um, all right, yeah, you're you're trying to pull them out, uh, and you, you go to just drag the their leg and separate it from the clay, and the person just no, no, you're gonna break it, you're gonna break it, uh, uh, and you're not quite able to get their leg out on this round, uh, but you're over with them trying to help them out, and they do seem to appreciate that you're like actively trying to help the situation as we move... I'm sorry, do you have a bonus action? Uh... Oh, no, oh, not I need right to, now. I need to roll for... Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, that is going to bring us next to Lana. What would you like to do, Lana? Well, being I'm rather uh, large myself, I'm just going to start uh, taking my hex tech wrench and start repairing things with me. Uh, all right. What does this do? Oh, um, and, and I, yeah. Yes. Uh, keep in mind that mending has a casting time of a whole minute. Does it for a cancer? Yep. Uh... So it, it takes a minute to repair something if you want to um, repair. It's, not, it's usually not meant to be used in, you know, in combat, uh, which you can start repairing it if you want to. I'm just saying it'll, it'll be a while. Well, in that case, I guess I'll uh, start pulling out some of uh, the clay and stuff from the other side of just to try uh, to open things up. Uh, trying to get some of the other clay that he um, was just kind of putting onto the ground and stuff? Yes. All right, go ahead and make me an athletics check to push past him to start with. Uh, 11 is just enough, or I guess one more than enough. Uh, and you get by him without too much issue, uh, and you just start huffing clay out. And there's no person in this clay, so it's pretty easy. Uh, you can just do that. You just start tossing clay out, you know, through the door uh, behind and, and into the streets. There's a lot of people on the streets that are looking a little bit scared and, uh, and uh, you know, steering clear of this building right now, but there's not going to affect anyone, so you toss it out in the street. Uh, and you clear out, I think, that section of clay, so it'll be easier to get out uh, if people eventually are able to get out. Uh, as we zip around to the top of the initiative, which I believe is going to be Dakar. What would you like to do, Dakar? Things have not been going great for everyone so far. The car will uh, try to just squeeze between Hadaway's legs to get in front of him. Oh, make an acrobatics check. Um, a nine. Uh, you go to <laughs> Jesus. You go to squeeze between his legs, and right as he does, he kind of shifts around, uh, and you just kind of find yourself like stuck right in between him, uh, and you push yourself back a little bit. Uh, but Hadaway's kind of bumbling movement in here is preventing you from uh, from going through. Uh, okay. Um. Uh, again, getting rid of the clay. It's good, but put it outside, out of the building, please. Okay. 
Uh, and go ahead and make me a, uh, a persuasion check. Uh, One of those I, I mean, he's, he says, okay, is what you hear Hadaway say. Um, <clears throat> uh, that's going to bring us next to Hiori. Yori, what would you like to do? People are still panicking. Is it possible for me to move past him? Um, it is, uh, it is, like I said, you just have to make an acrobatics or an athletics check to get into the building through him from where he's standing right now. Not a problem. You kind of shove your way past. You're in the, uh, the main space. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to just kind of step myself five feet in front of him, hold my hands up where he can see him, and just very calmly just say, all right, slow down. Just just stop for a moment and think about what's going on in your surroundings. Um, go ahead and make me a persuasion check. Uh, I, I think with advantage, because this is slowing down is something that he's probably, very, I'd say he's very good at. <laughs> Um, crit 20. All right. And he kind of looks at you and you see him visibly almost immediately slacken. Um, <clears throat> and as he kind of calms himself, uh, he, <clears throat> he, he begins looking around and I have caused, it's his turn. I have caused distress with my actions. I am, I am sorry. I am Hadaway. I hoped to learn from all of you about love, but I have made you feel hate. He says, not sure if he's right, and looking now towards, uh, uh, looking towards you guys, kind of like, did I do good? Uh, uh you're just gonna look back. At the crowd, just kind of like, come on, please. Uh, I mean, and the crowd is is still rowdy, uh, and not having yet kind of adjusted themselves. You guys are getting closer to defusing the situation. You guys have uh, a few successes now, um, but the crowd still kind of rowdy right now. Are more people after that first plate plate through are just <laughs> chucking stuff up at Hadaway, uh, and. Um, I, I still have a little bit of movement left over from moving past him, or no? Um, <clears throat> yeah, you still have a, a little bit of movement. Okay, I, I would, I would have liked to place myself, uh, between him and the crowd, so any place that they're throwing are likely to possibly hit me. I, I think the issue here is such that the crowd he's is fanned and he's massive. <laughs> Uh, so there's no, like, one spot you can be that's going to cover everything. And, you know, you're blocking plates and stuff and kind of like, no, no. Uh, but he's uh, he's getting pelted with the stuff. You just see a fork kind of fly out and stick into his arm, uh, which he doesn't really seem to mind all that much. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, the, but then it's like a glass of water and it kind of spills on him and Hadaway's looking around just like kind of confused now uh and um not uh not mad but he's just i'm sorry but i am hadaway uh pff, gets smacked with a plate uh this is a misunderstanding i will leave pff, fork in the arm i will pff, oh, no. glass of water splashes over him all right. All right. and he just right. stops in mid-sentence and you see him just pff, slack completely and can just check out and he's just now standing there motionless. Sure, he's going to very do the very classic sigh of... <sighs> and then you hear kind of a, a deep... <clears throat> uh, you kind of hear a deep voice uh, kind of come from Hadaway, and he says... Golem under siege. And then he just kind of writes himself up and starts to <clears throat> uh and starts to animate. I would like you guys to re-roll initiative. Hey, I'm still 15. Oof. Double oof. 
That's going to bring us to the first in a uh, the first initiative, which is going to in this moment be Hadaway. You see him right himself, and he just turns around, smashing through the wall. What was wasn't broken yet for glass is now just completely ripped off along with a lot of the front of the building as he leans over and picks up the bits of clay that had been kind of schlopped off of him before and you see them kind of re-emerge into his body uh, as he kind of like turns back around uh, and then begins walking menacingly back into the cafe after kind of regaining this bit of his body. Uh, that's going to bring us to uh, that's going to bring us to Dakar. But if you're is slightly... Oh, I'm... Um, you're correct. I, I, no, I'm sorry. That was... No, it's a new initiative. Oh, you're right. It, it's Hiori. I was just... Yeah. Hiori, my apologies. Hiori, what would you like to do? Uh, sigh and give everyone in the... By the way, uh, Twitch is having problems, but... Uh, Hiori is going to sigh and just give everyone a kind of, now look what you've done, glare. And the people that are kind of here in the, the people that are here in the cafe are just kind of like looking scared and at you, Hiori, like, what? This doesn't seem good. Like, this seems less good than somehow it was before. Uh, and they're kind of wanting, wondering what they should do also. Uh, but what do you uh, what do you actually do? Hiori is going to turn around, right? And I, I know for a fact that my bless from all that time ago has already worn off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to do two things. Let me check. All right. Ooh. I don't suppose I can break down main actions and the bonus actions. Um, no, unfortunately not. Uh, okay, then I'm just gonna compel duel at the Hathaway. Absolutely. Or at Hathaway. Go ahead and make a. Or well, he makes a wisdom saving throw, correct? Yes. Hathaway is actually not the wisest, so. Uh, how do I rolls a three? He fails. He will battle you and only you. Uh, or, you know, he can't, he has disadvantage against anyone other than you. Uh, what does it look like as you compel duel with him? Do you just like step up and just stand in this path? What is it? What's the move? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my shield off my back and step just straight in his way where I'm in the center of his vision. All and right. Kind of ta taking my most imposing size possible. That way I have his attention and nobody else. Um, <clears throat> uh, and he's, uh, he just kind of leans forward and you see him bringing back one of his massive arms to strike down at you. I want to get to his turn again, but Dakar is first. I'm sorry, you still have an action. Did you want to take an action? Sounds like you're dodging maybe. Oh, dodge would be a great idea, actually. Yeah, we'll just, you dodge. Uh, and Dakar, what would you like to do? Um, that's a good question, because I can't do anything that would disrupt that compelled duel. Uh, get them out. Hmm? Get the civilian... Get the other people out. Good point. Well... Hiori has the golem itself distracted. How do we distracted? Um, he'll try to persuade the civilians to leave through the door and go to like somewhere else, anywhere Just, else. Yeah, anywhere. Uh, make a persuasion check with advantage because from the beginning they wanted to leave anyway. Um, so this is kind of like a. I, I think this is just, do you do it efficiently and calm? Oh, man, you're just having a a rough time of it tonight, Dakar. Um, what do you say to the people? Come on, guys. This way, either way. Just either side of the paladin. Don't get in front of her. Just bolt um, for it. The, they all go to leave 
uh, but there is a panic and people are kind of like um, pushing each other aside and kind of like trampling over each other as they're going out the door uh, and it's massively slowing down people's escape through here. Um, they're leaving, but uh, some of them are definitely still in the blast zone uh, as you kind of end your round here. And is there anything else on your turn to bonus action or? I'd uh, just like to kind of run and climb up Hiori's back to get back on her shoulder. All right, yeah, you absolutely do that. Lana, what would you like to do? Uh, seeing the, assessing the situation, I pop my rage and get ready to intercept anything that might harm civil. All right, you go into a rage and you're going to basically stand beside Hiori and get uh, get defensive? Right, and block anything that might go out, you know, inadvertently hit the civilians. Absolutely. And then we're going to move to Thrun. What would you like to do? Thrun will <clears throat> sort of move, to, move kind of up the other side and try to, trying to herd the civilians out the door and keeping an eye out for any injuries. And I suppose I will... I suppose I will. So you're trying to facilitate <clears throat> people getting out yeah. the door. Yeah, try. Yeah, try. Just like, come on, come on, and through. Make me an animal handling check, <laughs> because these people are basically scared animals right now, and you are trying to handle them. <laughs> um. Through just having someone like a like a trained sheepdog, uh, people who are. You know, these people who are in a panic, just having your presence kind of being like, this is the way, this is the way, this is the way, kind of guiding them, uh, just instinctually, it smooths things out, uh, and the jam that was before kind of clears up, and people are able to escape, getting any, you know, civilians out of the immediate, out of immediate danger. Uh, as we move to the top of the initiative, which is Hadaway. Uh, and, and Hadaway... Bonus action prepping a shillelagh. You prep a... You can just cast Shillelagh as a bonus act. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. See what you're saying. You're casting Shillelagh. Yeah. Um, and Hadaway is going to haste and then slam. Uh, you watch as Hadaway kind of... Uh, you, you see him kind of like shuddering a little bit, and then his hand moves outrageously quickly towards you, Hiori. That's a critical failure. A 21 and a 10. The 21 hits, I assume? Uh, he's at disadvantage. Oh. Oh, yes, you dodged. Um... So that's a critical failure, a 10, and then a 10. All of those miss. I, uh, well, in a sense, I'm not as dodging as much as I am just bracing on my shield and my sheer frame of dragonborn-ness. Absolutely. So heavy clay fists just <laughs> uh, crash downwards uh, and into your... Um, crash downwards and into your shield, but your feet remain kind of firm on the ground as you weather the storm of blows um, as Hadaway continues to berserk here in the streets. We move next in initiative to you, Hiori. What would you like to do? Oh, recharges. Um, I'm... How do I say this? You know what? Hold up. Okay, uh, I'm gonna bow him. Um, all right, you call upon your vow swearing to defeat this foe. Oh yeah, and less defeat in, well, from a flavor sense, but it's less defeat and destroy and more... Overcome. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to completely endure this guy. Um, okay. I'm going to take the dodge action again. I'm not going to hit... All right. Fair enough. Um, you get ready to dodge. That's going to move us to Dakar. What would you like to do? Uh, uh, Fiori, what, what's the plan here? How are we going to deal with this? 
Well, we could try freezing him, but I'm not in the mood for taking any attacks against him myself. Are, are you sure? Hey, I mean, if we can get him out of siege mode, that might be a grand idea. Okay. Um... And in that case, the car will leap off of Yuri and try to dart past Hadaway to get behind him. Uh, all right, you do this. Uh, you can just you can just you know go farther enough around to do it without issue. So, ah, okay, then uh, nothing else for now except. Uh, Held action, and if uh, yeah, the hex blades cursed placed upon Hadaway. Yes. All right. Uh, everyone's just trying to avoid combat, but getting ready to fight if the need be met. Um, that is going to bring us to. Um, that is going to bring us to Sword uh, Lana. What would you like to do? Uh, well, compelled to do keep me from actually like talking to him like is he like so dead set on that uh, uh, you can compelled duel you can speak uh people can a compelled duel target can still hear yeah you just can't make any attacks or spells question mark against him anything that would try to harm him Okay, so things like charm or suggestion might work. Okay. Only problem is if you don't. Damn it! If you don't get something, you're gonna. You gotta make a call. You gotta make a call on what's it gonna be. All right. Um, In that case. I'm going to try to restrain him somewhat. Um, how? I feel like that's more of a, a rhetorical question than a mechanical question. Um, <laughs> yeah, what's the, um, I um I'm going to, uh, since he's a massive creature, I'm, I'm going to, uh, he, he is somewhat hindered in the building, isn't he? Like move. He's out on the he's on the street right now. Okay, in that case, I am going to just uh, take my great axe and whip it around his arm and just try to like hold his arm back so he won't take us. A... Trying to like dig the great axe into the arm to like pull it down to the ground. Oh no no no! Like uh, I it's like you're trying to grapple. Like just trying to hold you're something. Trying to grapple yeah, one arm. Yeah, yeah and just. Pull it from, pull it uh, from behind. Since he's a large right, creature, sure. I know I can't grab my arm. Make a grapple check. Uh, contested by Hadaway's strength, which is pretty high, but not that great of a roll. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Lana, you run up and you just kind of take your axe and uh, pull the arm down to the side and kind of behind the back, uh, and. <clears throat> Um, it's kind of, you know, it's restrained a little bit more. And, and the version of him that you're battling up against right now, he seems a lot less fluid uh, than the previous one that you were fighting. He's gained a little bit more rigidity, so it doesn't just kind of, like, push off as you do this. Uh, as we move next in initiative to Thrum, what would you like to do, Thrum? Uh, <clears throat> with regards to the civilians, are they, like, clear uh, and... Clear. Yeah, you're good on that. Clear and... Also clear from vision of Hadaway. So like Um there's a lot of street. It's gonna be a while before they're completely out of the sight of this. Okay. Hmm. Uh is going to try in uh, <clears throat> looks around, tries to like Wave some of the people, like, get inside. And then turns to Hadaway. Hadaway, look, it's just the, it's just us now. The people who are throwing things at you are gone. Uh, make a persuasion check. 
Um, Hadaway is going to uh, make a wisdom save. All right. Or wisdom check. Uh, he, uh, Hadaway doesn't seem to acknowledge that statement, uh, but I'll kind of tell you, you guys are making progress towards calming Hadaway down. Um, as, as Hadaway is kind of now just like looking around, uh, looking around for individuals and not seeming to like connect, like seems to register that what you have said is true, even if he's not, even if he's still acting up. Um, that's going to move us next in initiative to Hadaway, um, who is continuing to, uh, uh, who's continuing to just make a relentless assault forward. Um, haste. One of his arms is restrained, so I'll give you what I'll rule that is he gets one less attack than before, and you've dodged. That's an 18. Does an 18 hit you, Yuri? No. I and have a, another 18. Uh, those are both going to miss. Uh, as your shield, you continue to <laughs> uh, deflect it away. You can feel like the ground underneath you starting to crack a bit from the weight of blows. Um, but Hadaway is just spending another round hitting a wall uh, as we move next to you, Hiori. All right. What's the play? Um... You guys are being very nonviolent against him, so. Yeah, we. I, I think we want to calm him down, like completely. So I'm. I, I I'm taking another dodge action and hoping that everyone else can persuade him to. Uh, just to being just a relax. just being a wall for your party right now. I love it. Uh, yep. It's a Hiori, is, It's a Hiori move. <laughs> that is my job. Be be a damn wall. As we move to Dakar, what would you like to do, Dakar? Hey, um, elephant guy, can you can you grab his other arm? Uh, I I guess I can try. It's not necessarily my strong sp suit, but I'll give it a shot. Uh, I I I can't really. I don't think I could. I think he would just lift me if I tried to grab his arm. But I'll try to make it easier for you. Uh, Dakar will. Cast. Hex. And to... disadvantage on strength? Yes, disadvantage on strength. Excellent. Um, Hadaway is hexed. Anything else on your turn? Yes. Uh, Dakar will run, over, run alongside to Throom, kind of try to climb up on his shoulder, and basically take the help action by whispering encouraging words into his ear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you need to necessarily a... climb up onto Thrum's shoulder in order to do that. <laughs> can you break but... me off a piece of some of those encouraging words, Dakar? Not to put you on the spot, but to put you on the spot? Come on, you got this. You're big, strong fella. You're friendly fella. You're gonna, you're gonna protect <laughs> us all and you're gonna protect him from himself. Just hold on his arm. You've got this. <laughs> Thrum, you've been thoroughly motivated as we move next to uh, Lana Co here. Lana, what would you like to do? Uh, you're currently uh, so grappling. You got the arm locked down, uh, but that's about, like, you can't, your arms are, you pretty much only got your words at this point, frankly, unless you want to break the grapple on the arm and, and let go. Well, that's what I plan on doing anyway, so. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm say? going to try to persuade, uh, that's where it, uh, had away. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know why I said hat horse. Uh, I was going to try to persuade uh, had away to uh, calm down because there's the people are gone. There's nobody trying to fight you. It's you know, calm down. Um. All right. Yeah. Go ahead and make a persuasion check. Uh. Eleven. Um, uh, unfortunately, Ty goes to an offender. So Hadaway's still in still in rage mode at the moment. Uh, as we move next to Throom, Throom, what would you like to do? I'm going to go for the grapple. For that grapple. Uh, go ahead and make me an athletics check, contested by the strength. You have advantage on your athletics check. And 17. he has disadvantage, but it doesn't matter. 
Yes, uh, you pull the other Hathaway arm down behind their back, uh, reducing their attacks to zero for the round. Uh, and much like, uh, much like a barbarian rage, uh, as it passes now to Hathaway's turn, and they're just standing there restrained and unable to attack and move, you watch as Hathaway just slumps down the same way that he did before you saw him go into this kind of berserker mode. Uh, and you kind of let go of the arms of Hathaway. They kind of stop, and then Hathaway picks their head up and is looking around at you, and uh, Hathaway looks at the group of you and says, it would seem that my defensive protocols were activated. Yeah, I, 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 I think you could say that. Hiro's um, gonna drop her concentration now. All right. Don't worry, buddy. We, we are taking care of you, though. Uh, and Hadaway is kind of like walking over to the. Uh, Hadaway is kind of like walking over to the shop where everything got wrecked, and he just kind of destroyed a lot of stuff, uh, and is saying, "It seemed like there were." I am perhaps more sad than before. I did not want to hurt those people. I had hoped to learn from them more of love. And now they have run away in fear and anger. This is a terrible feeling. He already is going to pay off the cafe owner. Yeah, (laughs) you you settle. You settle things with the cafe. They're not happy, but there's not uh, really a lot they can do about it at this point, so... What's the price, by the way? Um, I mean, the price comes in gold. Uh, uh, and for the dares, like the repairs and damages, they're asking for about 850 gold pieces. 850 gold? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll give the them a is... platinum. <laughs> they're just kind of like, they like accept it. They're not like happy still because their cafe is ruined, but they're like, Okay, I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna talk to the guard about it. Uh, I start going to work on this, preparing some of the damage. Uh, and then they're a lot more happy because they got a platinum for repairs. And you're doing a lot of the repairs. Well. Um, that's pretty good. Stuff like the the front is just too fractured to repair in any reasonable amount of time. But some of the tables and stuff you fix, which is nice. Hiori is going to walk out over to Hathaway and just kind of put her shield on her back and sigh quietly, and she's like, well, there is something you actually could have learned about it, Hathaway, if you think on it for a little bit that even though you scared people by accident, and we unfortunately were a little amateurish in handling the situation. We still tried to keep everyone in a good light. We still tried to make sure that nobody got hurt, and that included you in a, in a way. Uh, and he kind of thinks for a moment, and then he looks back at you, he and says, You love me? In the manner of speaking, I suppose that's accurate. And Hadaway kind of looks around at all of all of you and goes, "Do all of you feel this love?" Yeah, sure. As a friend, I mean, but taking consideration, <laughs> it, love takes time and understanding to uh, time to really understand. I, so, yes. you know, people will come around eventually. He means yes. To get to... He, does, he does mean yes. Yeah, you're, you're cool. This is simpler than perhaps I thought. And he thinks for time. I love all of you as well. That's how it should be. Maybe love is just an ideal, any kind of things for a while, just to be good to people. 
and he's like really reaching for for like vague words here uh but he's kind of like looking around he's am i right that yeah, is uh, in fact a type yeah, of love uh and he kind of turns around and he begins walking back i am going to go and maybe read more uh and he kind of looks back even smiles a little bit thank you for your help would you like to read yeah books are cool <laughs> <laughs> after a long delay Descartes, uh just yeah i will uh and you guys kind of step back inside uh and a few moments later uh you watch as uh as uh hadaway is just kind of you know sitting there reading for a time and, and you're waiting for the artificer to come back and he comes back with your choc chocolate chocolate and and just kind of uh just kind of says man what happened out there that was it looks like quite a um quite a ruckus was caused the whole shop from out there is completely destroyed we don't want to talk about it oh uh, yes um, definitely definitely try to avoid speaking about that with Hadaway. Uh, and... Hold on. And as I say Hadaway, I do gesture to the goal. I have two last checks that I need to make, and I, I want to know if anyone wants to help me, because I am sculpting some chocolate, and I'm sculpting clay. Uh, is anyone... Help you with the clay. Uh... In that case, roll those checks. Um, but while that's happening as well, um, the uh, the artificer kind of walks over and looks at Hadaway sitting on the uh, sitting on the bench. Uh, and Hadaway looks up and goes, "Ah, creator, I am glad that you have returned. There's something I would like to tell you." And the creator kind of like stops for a moment. With the artificer uh, and Hadaway just goes, "I love you." Uh, and Artificer kind of looks back at the, uh, kind of looks back at the group of the four of you, uh, and is like, puts his shoulders up, like, how do I deal with this? Hiori smiles at him as she's, by the way, that crit is to Hadaway's face that she's making. As she's, uh, making his new face, she just looks at him like, well, you're either going to say it or you're not. You made him, and to a degree, you do definitely feel responsible for him. Um, and you go over and you kind of give Hadaway the clay, uh, and you just watch as it kind of absorbs into him, and whoop, it becomes his new face. What's the face look like? I was going for a distinguished kind of uh, Human? Chiseled. Yeah, human. Chiseled. Hmm. Um... How do I say this? Kind of gentlemanly, uh, nice hairline, stuff like that. Uh, all right. So you make a very handsome Hadaway uh, as we kind of wrap up here, and the artificer just looks at Hadaway and goes, "I guess I love you too, Hadaway." And Hadaway kind of nods and goes, "Good. Then let's get back to work." And with that, I believe that our first adventure comes to a conclusion. Each of you earns 200 Bartholomew Bucks. Each of you gain one point of experience. And thank you all very much for teaching this robot how to love <laughs> in our first adventure here on D&D Time. Do any of you want to shop? Uh, I must decline. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I believe you had as an extra moment. Do you have anything you would like to say about your chocolates that you've crafted? Or is that, have... is that for the, the epilogue, so to speak? Um, what do you mean the epilogue? I mean, just off screen. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, that is for here. As a chocolate sculpting girl that Hiori is, she will also have an ornate box that she hid in her back from uh, Dakar, and she will place 13 chocolates into it and then hand it to him just kind of out of nowhere. Just say happy Valentine's Day. Uh, and 
th 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 thank you, Yori. I, I really want to say that I, well, uh, I am, um, well, the, the word in the words and uh, uh, rrr. Rrr. and on that note, I believe that our adventure does come to a close. Now, would anyone like to? But now, would anyone like to shop? No. Okay. Uh, Throom, Lana, or Dakar? I'm short. I'm also a little bit short. No, thank you. And hearing no one, in that case, thank you all for watching Adventure 1. We'll be back with our second adventure of the evening very shortly. I am excited to see you all soon. Be, be back in a second. <laughs>